Hey guys, so this is the penultimate week of. Uh, why is this so bloody noisy? Ah! Finals have hit quite hard, I think. Hey guys, so this past week has been the penultimate week of revision I've had for my finals. As such, I don't have all of that much to talk to you about. What little I can tell you is that I had a formal haul at St Peter's where I ate this, this and this. One of the best, if not the best, formal haul vegetarian mains I've ever had. And my mate Ryan, who does history, finished his exams and we got him in a rather spectacular trashing. Ryan's a guy who eats toast uh, a lot, like for a lot of his meals. So uh, we got him with a garland of toast uh, and attacked him with bread before throwing him in the river. Before that, we also got him with champagne and various substances. But what I've been largely dealing with is preparing for exams, and I don't want to talk anymore about physics because frankly I'm sick of talking about physics. I have been all week. What I thought I'd talk about is the structure of taking exams in Oxford and sort of how it all works, because I noticed a few people were asking that question in comments previously. In order to do this, however, I need a costume change. This is Subfusk. This is our formal university wear, so what we wear for matriculation, graduation, university ceremonies, and exams. I really quite like wearing subfusk. It kind of feels like putting on armour when you're getting ready for an exam. So I've mentioned this in another video, but uh, to repeat what I said before, there's a difference between humanities students and science students when it comes to taking exams in Oxford. The only exams which count towards a humanities student's degree classification are those at the end of their three years. So they can take anything up to, I think the most I've heard of is 28 hours of exams in the space of a couple of weeks. And taking those exams will determine what they get as their degree, whether they get a first, 2-1, two, 2-2, two, two, a third, or not getting a degree. Science students, such as myself, on the other hand, take exams every year of their degree and they all count towards your final mark. This means that by the time I'm taking my last two papers this year, I already have 80% or so of my degree already done for better or for worse. And the structure varies from subject to subject. So, for example, in physics in second year, everybody will do the same papers. Everyone will do, um, I've got to remember this, it was two years ago, uh, thermal physics, quantum physics, and uh, electromagnetism and optics. And everyone does those papers. In third year, there's a difference between those doing a three-year course and a four-year course. If you're doing a three-year course, you just do four exams. If you're doing a four-year course, you take six exams. Everybody doing the four-year course takes the same papers, and those aren't doing the three-year course choose four papers from those six. Then when it comes to fourth year, there are seven options to choose from, and everybody chooses two. So there's a lot more, it spreads out as the degree goes on. For something like history, for example, though, um, People choose whatever modules they want to take. Pretty much beyond the start of their degree, when they get the basics laid down, they are free to take whatever modules they want, and then have to revise them all at the very end. This means that no two people will have exactly the same exam timetable, although there are certain papers which everyone will take. So, for example, in history, again, um, everybody takes their last paper together, which is kind of nice, because it means that when you finish, you have a site like this. Now, when you combine taking so many hours of exams, like, say, 28 or 24 hours of exams in, in the space of a couple of weeks, um, with the pressure of knowing what it means, this is what's going to determine the way the world sees you, and add into that the fact that you have to dress up fancy for it, you have to go to a special building, there's an awful lot of tension in Oxford at this time of year. Basically, I cannot wait until I get my road carnation. I should probably explain what that means. So there's a tradition in Oxford that was only started a couple of decades ago, Geez, that puts it in perspective. <laughs> that students who are taking their exams all wear a carnation, a flower, on your lapel. I'm not wearing one because I don't want to tempt fate. If you're a student taking your first exam, you wear a white carnation. If you're in the middle of your exam period and you're, you're taking a, say you take five papers, for your first exam you wear a white carnation, then for your second, third and fourth papers you wear a pink carnation, and then for your last paper you wear a red carnation. When you see someone who's wearing a red carnation, you know how much they've gone through. You know how much pain and suffering they've had to endure to get to that point where they're about to finish. And you haven't finished, so you hate them. Thank you guys for your amazing response to my shout-out video asking for questions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I uploaded a video earlier in the week, and uh, you can watch it, you can find out for yourself. Also, thank you for your motivational comments. They were incredible. They really actually boosted a lot of us here because a bunch of uh, my friends were looking at the comment section and um, found some which were genuinely motivating to them. So thank you very much. Anyone who is taking exams at the moment, the very best of luck to you. I know your pain. Believe me, I know your pain. And for this week's comment, I, I need to be cheered up. So complete the sentence. If I had a million pounds, I would go be creative. Jamie, enjoy your lack of exams, you lucky... And I will see you guys in a week's time, probably very briefly.